<laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to Tef's Tavern. I'm Big Mike, and uh, we're going to kick off a little bit of 5e basics tonight. Um, let's just go around uh, the way I've got it laid out on my bar here. So we're starting off with uh, Josh James, uh, Jason from Dark Age of. We've got David and then Marcus. And uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, introduce you guys, and I'll introduce the world. Okay, so basically in that order, um, I'm, I'm Josh from Candles and Ponies, and I will be playing Barzimul the wizard today. He is a, he is a man who is traveling to this uh, continent, which is new to him. Um, he doesn't really know why he's traveling there. He, he was told that a friend of the family had, had disappeared a few weeks ago, had traveled to that continent, has not been... <laughs> heard from since and um, this is the son of a man to whom he owes much because when he was serving in the military um, in his youth which was several decades ago now uh, Barzimal nearly died and this heroic dwarven man um, jumped in and took many crossbow bolts in the back to save him and ever since he has felt uh, a deep debt of gratitude towards uh, this hero's family because essentially he died that day this dwarven man died and ever since um Barzimal has felt not only has he began to study magic so that he can be more prepared to um notice illusory traps like the one that he led good men and women into where they died but he also feels a deep debt of gratitude to the uh the widow and the children of this dwarven man so when he found out that one of them disappeared into the wilderness of this untamed land he he got on that boat and you know he started heading that way and he found himself amidst some strange people um one of whom we're about to hear about i am barnaby short strides i'm a lightfoot halfling i am on this boat well because let's say i've left behind collectors and uh well when you are a uh, smuggler and uh people are after you it's best to get out I had no idea we were headed to such a dangerous and wild continent. This may not go as well as I had planned. Am I next or? Go for it, man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No worries. All right. Uh, my name's Dave. Uh, I'm playing uh, Tache, a cleric of Savras. And uh, Tache, uh, his story is. Uh, Start, uh, starting to sound a lot uh, very familiar as far as this uh, ragtag group goes. Um, he uh, is a scholar, uh, astrologer by profession, um, and uh, due to some delvings into what some may, be, some may consider forbidden or dangerous knowledge, um, he found himself uh, having to leave his uh, town of origins and uh, actually uh, found himself uh, amongst uh, a sanctuary of uh, of holy holy men who took him in, and uh, uh, he actually found a sanctuary of more uh, knowledge and lore that he was able to. Uh, uh, some may say pilfer, but he would think of it as more acquiring. You know, knowledge belongs to no man. You know, <laughs> um, uh, unfortunately, he discovered that uh, some uh, unsavories uh, weren't too happy with. Uh, uh, some of the, the lore that he had acquired, uh, some items of note, mainly some tomes of knowledge, and he's actually a man uh, on the run. So he basically got on the first boat out of town <laughs> that he could, and there you have it. Okay, I'm playing a mountain dwarf fighter named Tancred Fanghammer. Uh, Tancred was a soldier. He joined the military to follow his uncle, <clears throat> Uncle's footsteps, who mysteriously died with a bunch of crossbow bolts in his back. Tancred doesn't know the, the details of that, but he heard the story second, third hand. While he was in the, the, arm, the military as a soldier, he was uh, what we in the infantry used to call a uh, rear in the gear guy, rear, with, rear in the, with the gear in the rear or a rimf is what we would call him. He had never seen combat. Uh, he was a blacksmith. Uh, with the carriage baggage train most of his time. He recently mustered out, took his money. He wants to, at some point, set up his own blacksmithing shop, but he figured he'll seek a little adventure first and see if uh, see what comes of that. He uh, presents himself as a uh, strong soldierly type, but 
He's never killed any man, never killed anything. Uh, he doesn't know how he would react in that situation, so I guess we'll find that out. Uh, he does wear his, uh, he's proud of his rank. He was a sergeant. He wears a spalder on his left shoulder, his rank, uh, visible to everyone, even though he's still not in the military. And uh, he still likes people to call him that, even though very few do. Uh, he, he carries a war hammer that he has given his own last name to, Fang Hammer, uh, which has never tasted blood, but perhaps that'll change today. Very nice, very nice. Kind of, thanks, guys. You all find yourselves uh, just arriving on the shores of a continent named Aren. Uh This this continent was recently discovered, recently in the, the long uh, lines of the world, uh, meaning about 50 years ago. Since then, it has been marginally colonized, and not as a, not a ton is known of it. Uh, it is assumed that it split off from a great continent uh, several centuries ago when a great cataclysm shook the world and pretty much broke all civilizations apart. Uh, scattered throughout the, the world, you do still find remnants of old ruins and strange uh, technology if, or magic, depending on how you look at it. And uh, you never know what, when you're going to come across a new crevice or a valley that, that is opened and showing some sort of underground tomb or lair of an unknown species. So you guys do uh, come, come down uh, through the Sea of Swords and you land in the small town of, I just wrote this down, of Adgate. It's a halfling settlement. Uh, the, these were some of the few, the first uh, explorers that founded Arin, and uh, they're kind of known for their stockiness. Generally overweight, they eat a ton of fish, and they're known <laughs> for it. So just coming into shore, you you probably passed a good twenty to thirty small fishing boats that happily waved you on because they were thrilled to see new people coming to the land. So you guys pull up on dock, and uh, a stout, thin-bearded uh, halfling comes up to you and uh, asks, "Who's going to be paying the the, the fees for docking today?" Hmm. That would be Tinkrit, Fanghammer, Dwarf. You must have jewels. You must have. You must have gold. What do you mean? I think we should all chip in. We were all in this boat together. There's four of us. What? What's the? What's the cost, sir? We're going to be looking. Well, well, how long do you intend to stay? Well, what's cheapest? Well, and he opens his logbook. And he's flipping through it. And he's flipping through it. And you can tell he's not done this a ton. So he's, yeah, he's going. And he goes, can you, well, can you, can you hurry it up here? We have a places to be. Oh, oh, of course. Of course, sir. And he looks down and he goes, looks like it looks like the going rate's been about five copper a week. Five okay. copper a week. You charge us to be uh, about this entire continent? No, simply to dock at our to moor at our docks. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Tancred will take out a gold piece and put it in his mouth, bite it and say, will this cover whatever amount of time we're going to be here? Before you spoke, his eyes turned into dinner plates, and he, you could tell he was no longer listening, just staring at the object in your hand. And he just, with his jaw slack, he just nods. Uh, the halfling would stick his hand up uh, and, and maybe attempt to, sleight of hand, take this gold piece. And, and, <laughs> a sleight of hand and, check. And, yeah, and say, and say, sleight of hand check. What are you, crazy? Okay, uh, 18. I don't have sleight of hand, do I? No. <laughs> You can add your dexterity to it. Plus three, 21. Oh, buddy. Jeez. Yeah, I know, right? So as his jaw is, is just going and he's nodding, he blinks, and then he, he shakes his head a little bit, and he goes, he goes oh. No, my, my good friend, uh, I, have, I have a deal for you. How about this? Uh, there's a good chance we won't be coming back. Oh. Uh, but if we do, we would have much treasure in which we could pay you far better. Uh, and if we don't come back, you can keep the boat, uh, and we don't pay you anything now. How how does that sound? The old adventurer's tax, of course, of course. Yes. Every week we coming another one. We may never return. In fact, you usually is, don't. Is that so what absolutely. all these boats are doing here? That's why we have some trouble docking our boat. Precisely. And he says, "Yeah, he happily he writes down your name, which you didn't give him, ah, cool. <laughs> and he walks off." My and name is Diggory. Diggory Short Strides. <laughs> of course, Diggory Short Strides from behind his behind his back as he trots off, and you can tell he thinks he got that gold piece. 
Yeah, and uh, I've slid that into my uh, pocket of my uh, trousers, that gold piece, that shiny little gold piece. Wonderful. <laughs> Tito. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, so you guys, you guys make way, and uh, the, it's a pretty small settlement. You do see a lot of huts uh, mm -hmm. very close to the shore that, that are almost lined up with where the different fishing boats have been moored for the evening. It's, uh, it's early evening now, and uh, you can see people are kind of settling in for dinner. Uh, just up the way, there's a main causeway through town. You can see uh, a larger building, kind of a stick built instead of hut, where uh, there, there's a good a plume of smoke coming from the chimney. Very... Uh, could easily be assumed to be a tavern. Okay. So uh, Tache will point his uh, staff kind of forward and kind of heft his uh, his sack, knapsack, I guess, you know, or satchel that's on his shoulder, kind of groan because it's full of books. Uh, and uh, he'll kind of moan a little bit and, and say, uh, even, even though we've been on a ship for a while, how about we get some lodgings mm. my back is killing me ah that that sounds very good i don't know what they feed my uh, species right now my 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 uh race of friends but they eat well clearly there must be good food here just as you say that you see I'm, uh, uh, an even stockier halfling walk by pushing a giant wheelbarrow just overflowing with giant salmon ah, good sir good oh. sir oh the Oh, do you, yeah. Do you have someone who can carry this bag of books for my good friend? Oh, well, I'm I'm pushing the fish cart here, but uh, Toby! And his, yes. son trot, this, his son trots up, just a little halfling uh, adolescent, and he says, yeah, yes, Pa, it's, carry this man's books. He's going to pay you. <laughs> Tache kind of, like, stops and kind of looks around like, that wasn't my intent, you know? <laughs> of, um, of course we'll pay him, of course. He kind of, looked, he kind of looks around, uh, he looks at, at, gives Barnaby kind of an eye, like, Ugh, and he uh, opens up the uh, the bag and pulls out, like, a uh, a tattered-looking uh, scroll and, nice. and hands, it to the, hands it to the boy and says, here, child, I mean, be he very just... careful of that. It's ancient. He takes it and he says, good, sir, of course. I assume you're going up to the drowned lady, the, the, the inn. Yes, of course. And he just trots off without you. He's taking it up there for you. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, Tache gives uh, Barnaby another look and kind of shakes his head and uh, cinches up his bag again after giving it a quick count and then continues. Nice. Uh, Tancred would uh, step towards the cleric and say, I would be willing to carry your bag for you. Uh, ignore the small one. <laughs> <laughs> With a child or, or Barnaby? Yes, he does look like a child, doesn't he? Ah, ah. Uh, he uh, gives you a, a, well, for him, it's a hearty slap, but, you know, he's not the, <laughs> he's no dwarf. Ow. But uh, he gives you a slap on the shoulder and, and gives you the bag. And you see, it's got it's got some weight to it. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of, what do you have in here? This is heavy. He leans in and he says, tomes of vast knowledge. <laughs> Nothing you would understand, though. Worthless. Uh, they are worthless. Uh, well, they belong to him, and that's what's important. And he says they're important, and they're important to us all. Okay. I, I hope so. I do hope so. Did he say drowned lady? There must be a story behind that. We must ask when we get to the tavern. Hmm. You guys make your way up there? Barzimal's just sort of sharpening his dagger and just shaking his head at all these shenanigans. <laughs> He, he, he doesn't have his sea legs, and he's glad to be back on dry land again. And he is very interested in asking the proprietor of this tavern if uh, any more dwarves have come through in the past few weeks. Just one sec real quick, guys. So. Is that something you would have let us know, Josh? If approached. Uh, Barzimal is a man of few words, so he would have spent most of his time studying his spells and so we don't we don't know that you're looking for a you have this query about the dwarves. Uh, I would say there's a pretty low uh, there's probably a pretty low chance of that. Yeah. Okay. Talk of that. Okay. okay. All right. Because that would interest me, but if I don't know, then I don't know. Arzimal has kind of had this thousand yard stare the entire time he's been on the boat, so he hasn't <laughs> uh -huh. really warmed up and gotten chummy. With so we got we got Telly Savalas from the Dirty Dozen. <laughs> Oh, that's man. not good. Oh, no, <laughs> buddy. That ain't he literally, good. he sits there day and night sharpening his dagger like, <laughs> and staring at it, literally. So. <laughs> that ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Mm -mm. Look, he's doing administrative work in the yes. fridge. <laughs> <laughs> I hope, you know, uh, let's hope it's he's not a nervous eater and he's eating a, a pint of ice cream right now. Or he's getting some fish out of there. Yeah, you? that's right. <laughs> a chest of ancient knowledge. Yeah. A tome of knowledge. Yeah. That's, where he, that's where he keeps all of his D&D &D books. I've been over there. <laughs> no, that's where the bad dice go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got to keep one nice until you're ready, right? <laughs> Yeah, so what, what were you guys doing on the boat? I assume it was a lengthy boat trip. I don't know. I uh, guess uh, Tache may have been, uh, I guess he could, I know what he was doing. He was probably, uh, you You guys saw him uh, kind of referencing like a good two or three uh, books back and forth and kind of transcribing stuff, you know, mm -hmm. uh, looked like a bunch of just goofball symbols and scrawlings and stuff like that and you know he, mm, yes of course every, ah yes you know every, every morning barzum will memorizes the comprehend languages spell <laughs> so he would have he would have been covertly reading this stuff without mentioning that he could read it sorry about that guys we had a dinner malfunction oh boy <laughs> yeah that's all right that's all right well uh i think uh tancred would have come on the boat because the captain told him there was good blacksmithing work with mm -hmm. these people but after being on the boat so long with the little uh, halfling type, he's not sure he wants to be around these people anymore. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> <He's>, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Barnaby's been sizing up whether he can carry everybody's purse when you're all dead bodies. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's been okay. eyeballing to see who might actually have money hidden in their socks, in their right. boots, in their boots. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, yeah, the town lays out in front of you. Uh, you can smell the, the forge of a blacksmith somewhere, and you do see the, like I said, the tavern lies 100 feet ahead. Well, I'm headed for the tavern. Uh, quick step, short strides. Got it. Moving. What, what time of day is it? Uh, probably four or five in the evening. It's, it's starting, okay. the sun is on its, way on its way down. It's not getting dark yet. Falling back on my training as a scout, I'm kind of surveying the landscape and the layout of the town. Um, okay. Does it give way to forested land further inland, or is it more like hilly? Is it more plain-like? From here, it's actually, uh, the beach is very short. It ends not 10 feet off, 10 feet off the dock. And from then, it, it seems to bro break into clay-cracked ground throughout the village. And just beyond that, it seems to be uh, kind of a, a temperate, cold grassland. And you do see uh, what appears to be a sizable forest in the distance at the base of a rather large looking mountain. What kind of condition is the road leading out of town? Does it look well traveled or does it look grown up? It's not well traveled or maintained, but it, it, it's there. It's passable. You can tell that people come back and forth from you can tell, somewhere. Yeah, there's, there's been uh, some traffic. Gotcha. No grass growing on the road. Just okay, well, take, take note of that. If they're going to the uh, tavern, uh, Tancred would go to the door with them and let him know he's going to introduce himself to the blacksmith and then he'll be back. So that's what he's going to do for a couple minutes. Wonderful. Uh, to Cheo follow, he'll make sure he grabs his satchel from Tank and uh, <laughs> gives him a nod and a thanks for carrying his uh, his uh, satchel. And nice. uh, he'll kind of, uh, uh, as kind of like a, I don't know, it's a nervous thing he does on occasion. He always reaches for the... Uh, the holy symbol of Savras that's around his neck. It's an orb. Um, kind of just holds onto it and takes a quick look and then goes inside the tavern. Maybe gets mm -hmm. a table for us. Okay. Yeah. You walk into a uh, fair sized establishment. There's probably 60 feet across and in either direction, wall to wall. At the very, uh, there's some tables in front of you. At the very back, you see a wide bar that goes the distance. You see a uh, the entire width of the building. You see two younger halflings, probably early 20s, and what appears to either be an elder or, or maybe even their father uh, tending bar. Is the, uh, the halfling kid in here that I gave the scroll to? He's at the bar now, and you see him actually handing it off to the older gentleman. What? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, raise my hand to get maybe one of the innkeeps or whoever's attention, and I'll kind of... Uh, point my staff towards a random table somewhere, you know, and I'll go sit and wait for the other guys. 
Marvelous. Tate, that boy you sent with a scroll, he's got the makings of a good smuggler. Well, why do you say that? Ah, because he transported it from you to him without without problem. But that is that is what a smuggler does. But he didn't ask who the recipient of the scroll would be. <laughs> oh, but you, but you assume that's what we do. Oh, right. As long as we paid. Ah, okay. He, he kind of uh, strokes his chin as if uh, he doesn't know. He's assuming Barnaby's being legitimate with them, but he's probably being bullshitted. But yeah. He goes, ah, I don't remember that. He, he raises an eyebrow. His, his, his right eye tweet, uh, twitches a little bit. Uh, do you have a book on smuggling in there I don't know about? Che kind of looks, kind of, kind of thinks for a second. Ah, one moment. And he starts rummaging through his satchel. He'll be in there for the next five or ten minutes. Okay. Nice. Nice. Bar Barzimal seems to recall that when he had Comprehend Languages cast on the boat, that he saw some pretty interesting books in there. There was a cookbook. <laughs> but right now he's not thinking about that. He's kind of scanning the crowd in the bar or tavern place to see if he sees any dwarves besides the one that he came with. You do, actually. You're going to see uh, uh, in the far corner from... Uh, it, near the bar, actually, you do see uh, a group of probably three or four of them. They appear to be sailors. I'm going to approach that group, and I'm going to greet them in Dwarvish. Mm. Hello. How are you, sir? Doing very well, very well, brothers. Let me buy you a round. You want a round? Of course you do. <laughs> he asks a question like it's a question. <laughs> he goes up and he goes up and slaps a gold down on the um, a bar. He says, I, I want you to get all these good men around. And, you know, if there's any left over, just share it around the room. The, the barkeep nods sternly and, and, mm, and points off to the two girls. And they, they fly into action, bringing up cups and pour, pulling ales and taking them out to the, the tables about the tavern. And he, uh, when you look back, the, the piece is gone. So that, that's fine. So I'm just going to, um, wait a minute, the piece is gone. So <laughs> did I see the halfling over here? <laughs> do I have no, beer? You didn't. <laughs> do I, okay. Did I, did I receive beers or, or did the piece? Oh just... yeah. No, there, there's two in front of you as well. After they served everyone else, you've been double served. Gotcha. Well, that's, that's great. So I'm, I'm sitting down with my new dwarven friends and I continue to speak to them in dwarven and I inform them that uh, there's a friend of mine that might have come through here uh, a few weeks ago. I sort of physically describe what Volgan looks like to them and which he, he would have been, I, I wouldn't say a young man because um, his father was like 200 and something when he died, you know, but Volgan would easily be about that age now, but still about middle age for a dwarf, you know. Red hair, braided beard, um, blacksmith. You know he's got he's got work on his hands. You know he's got soot in his skin, and I'm describing. It, and I said, and he left this holy symbol behind. And I lay down um, what is essentially my trinket, which is uh, a holy symbol to a dwarven god that I don't recognize. It's it's like a typical anvil and forge type thing that you would expect, but there's some sort of tentacle motif going on too. Hmm. They they stroke their beards for a minute and they say, "Well, as you can plainly see by our attire, we're we're men of the sea. We we haven't spent much time in in this village, but we do know that the blacksmith's a dwarf. You might speak to him." Mm. Very good, my friends. Very good. It's good to speak to you. May all your endeavors be fruitful. No, of course. And said, "Thanks for the drinks." As they finish theirs. <laughs> oh yes, I'll enjoy mine as well. There. Okay. Sorry. Parent stuff. Okay. So then Tankard, you've made your way off towards the obvious sound and smell of uh, uh, the village blacksmith. It's not a far walk. You approach a, a smaller smith building. He's outside uh, what appears to be working on horseshoes at the moment. It's and a, he's dwarf. He's a dwarf. dwarf. Yeah, okay. a dwarf. He's got... Uh, yeah, long braided gray hair and a great big bushy beard. You do notice uh, what appears to be hammers tattooed on the back of each of his hands as he swings down on each one. Okay. Uh, Tankard will walk right up to him, uh, stand to where he could see him if he looks up and say, uh, good sir, good sir, let me introduce myself. I am Sergeant Fanghammer, formerly of the, mili the military. Uh, 
a blacksmith myself by trade. How are you today, sir? Oh, it's always good to meet another blacksmith. Just come on in, come on in. He sets his hammer and his tongs down, and he opens his door to you. I'll follow him in and say, what are you, what are you working on? He says, oh, just going about the dues. You know, got to keep the horses in shoes, got to keep the men in swords. I'd like to uh, buy you a drink and talk about possibly work, getting some work around here, if that's uh, possible. Take you we over to always, the tavern. We can always talk about work, but you don't want to drink the swill those halflings serve. Here. And he pulls out a, a good jug and pops the cork right off and pours you a cup and says, some of the finest back from the mainland. And he hands it to you. And you can smell this is a strong dwarvish whiskey. Okay. I will drink it with pleasure. Really? <laughs> Thank you. That, 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 that was really good. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, speaking of, uh, you got any uh, any news about any kind of job around here? Either uh, some adventuring thing, or maybe uh, if you need help here in the blacksmith shop. Now, I've been good. I've keep I keep a really good top on the work around here. However, adventuring types like yourself, you'll do well going off to talk to the farmers on their way out towards the forest. There's been some strange things going on out there. Really. What Absolutely. kind of strange things? Oh, there's all sorts of weird talk. You never know what to believe these days. Uh, leprechauns jumping out of the bushes, uh, armies of the walking dead. Some say the devil Asmodeus himself has jumped out of the mountain. You never know. Oh. He would try to put on a stern face, but inside he's, like, terribly afraid. Uh, what, what? I didn't catch your name, good sir. What? Oh, Fracas. Fracas Goodhammer. Fracas Goodhammer. Well, uh, I've, I'm going to go uh, over there. My friends are in the tavern. I'm going to let them know what you've shared with me, and, and, and we might come back and talk to you some more, uh, if that would be okay, about these farmers. Uh, uh, dwarfs always welcome in my hearth. You come on whenever you need. Good. I appreciate that. It was a pleasure meeting you, Fracas. You good, sir. Then he'll take his leave and make his way to the tavern. You notice he doesn't jump back to his anvil, and he is no longer even pouring the whiskey. He's just kind of drinking it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rooster Cogburn style. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, now, just to reiterate, Barzamil, you were headed for the blacksmith as well? Well, I was heading that way, but this beer is really good. So I'm you're sitting there. The door, and you're like, man, this I might just stick around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've decided to sort of stick around and sort of listen and see if I overhear any rumors while I'm sipping this beer, especially since people, you know, I've sort of wet people's whistle a little bit. So I'm kind of. I'm kind of, you know, sort of listening, but not uh, sort of flying casual, you know. Like, oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, by now, the dwarves yeah. have actually picked out a couple of instruments. They're making some music. This is turning into a decent night around this tavern. Mm, gotcha. And you do pick up the names uh, Ames and Lynn Wynn of the Wynn Farmstead. They mm -hmm. seem to have, uh, apparently, they've had sex tuplets lately, like within wow. the last three or four weeks. Huh. And, uh, also, uh, you do catch wind of the good Hugh farm. Good that Hugh. there's uh, there's rumors of something strange afoot out there. Mm, strange, strange could be the the, the 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 owners of the farm have not been seen nor heard from in a couple of weeks, and they usually come into town to deliver beets and potatoes when they haven't. What a See. Mix. So when uh, Tancred gets back to the uh, tavern, I guess he'd walk in and see him. I guess it's just uh, the cleric. And is is uh, Bartleby sitting with them, with the uh, cleric? Bartleby at this point would be over uh, shuffling his feet in front of the uh, dwarves, dancing a little bit. Nice. <laughs> Doing some short stride work. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Uh, they actually start throwing silver at your feet. Right. Give yourself five silver. silver at my feet. Well, <laughs> oh, then, yeah. uh, then I would be, uh, I would kick it up a little more. Maybe uh, pull, pull the uh, the trousers up and, and start doing a jig. Yes. Uh, and as soon as uh, they take a break in their instruments, I would drop to my knees and start scooping up the silver. <laughs> nice, nice. Figure yeah, that out. They're more dance. drinks now. They're now <laughs> ordering drinks for the the entire bar as well. Wow. Yeah, was kicked off a trend. Uh, I'll come over with my silver, stuffing it in my pockets, and whisper to the cleric. Uh, they have lots of money to throw around here. Something is something is strange. Uh, Tache kind of jumps, jumps. You know, he looks up because he was still uh, flipping around in his satchel. You know, and he says, uh, "Did you say strange? What strange? Yes, 
they're throwing money around as if as if they've got lots of it. Who? Nice. The dwarves, the, 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 the instrument players. These haven't you been watching my dance? <laughs> you dance? <laughs> oh yes. Look, and I show him some of the silver I've collected. Okay, he kind of looks down and he actually points down to the floor and says, uh, you've apparently missed a few pieces between your toes down there. Yeah, uh, he'll uh, reach, he'll kick back looking, pick it up. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Already our fortunes are better here than uh, the mainland. Uh, he taps Barnaby on the shoulder and says, can you hold up one of those pieces? And he kind of leans in to take a, take a closer look at it. Uh, uh, is it... Uh, what kind of like stamping or etchings or whatever does it look uh like something of a more modern design or is it maybe ancient or an older design of uh silver the coins themselves don't mm -hmm. don't look like they're from this area they mm -hmm. they appear to be in fact they they're quite visibly stamped with the mark of the old empire ah okay so yeah this is the common coinage that you would see throughout back back in many lands back home Okay, mm -hmm. all right, so nothing really special about it. Is there okay. something Correct. wrong? And I'll bite on it. <laughs> Tastes like silver. <laughs> Is there something wrong with this? Uh, no, 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 no. It uh, it matches the silver in your teeth. It, it's fine. It's pure. <laughs> nice. So the, just then, one of the girls that was back uh, serving drinks comes up and says, uh, for, for your, uh, of course, you, you've paid for the night. Uh, I assume you'll all need separate rooms, or will you be rooming together? Hmm. How much per room would it be? Oh no, your friend threw down a solid gold coin. You're covered. <laughs> well then, separate yeah, we'll, rooms. Then. We'll take separate rooms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, then her sister comes up behind her with with four plates in her arms of good, you know, appears to just be tons of just heaped with cooked fish. Oh wow. Okay. Mm. Uh, Dig this, in. This might not have been such a bad idea after all. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, More fish. Didn't get enough of it on the boat. Right. <laughs> so, fellows, if we're looking for a job, I hear that the farmers up north could use some uh, help. There's some, uh, I don't know, the, I talked to the blacksmith. His name is Fracas. Maybe we should go talk to him after we eat, if you like. But uh, he's mentioned the farmers up north could use some help fighting off leprechauns. Uh, oh, leprechauns. Some kind of, uh, Undead as well. He wasn't what? specific. Wait, he just well, mentioned. What did you say? Did you undead leprechauns? <laughs> no, I don't think undead that together. He said them separately, but you never know. With with uh, he was an older older fellow. Smuggling is more my my thing. I don't know how well I could do with leprechauns and undead. Mm. Well, it is. is, there, uh, is there could be some. There could be some. Uh, Gold some in good it. pay in it. Yeah. From farmers, you think? Well, plus Linda helping hand. I mean, they only eat fish here, so the farmers can't be doing well. <laughs> well, maybe and other. Just then maybe you other do see uh, the doors open, and another mm -hmm. cart comes in. This one being pushed by a half elf, actually, and it's it's full of cages that are so full of chickens. The chickens are so fat that the feathers are bulging through the bars. Wow. Oh, we're gonna get a show. This must be the chicken show. <laughs> uh, and Barnaby would spin his chair around, stand on top of it, <laughs> applauding, waiting for the, the show to start. And he pushes it uh, just through the. He pushes his cart up to the the bar and just starts offloading baskets of chickens oh, that get carried show. then into the kitchen. Oh, okay, all right, okay. I wonder and who the, eats the chicken. Then the uh, the barkeep reaches in under the the bar and pulls out a hefty sack you can hear it very beautifully just ringing this is not silver ring this is gold ring and he hands it to the farm boy who then leaves hmm. farming ain't such bad work you're right yeah well, maybe we should go get a bunch of chickens <laughs> right obviously chickens are uh so maybe the the farmers commodity. reward us with chickens and we bring them back here and turn them in for gold there he's or, gentlemen i could uh liberate that gold from the farm boy and we don't have to kill. We don't have to deal with leprechauns at all. Uh, Tancred puts his hand in a Barnab Barnaby's face and says, "There will be none of that." <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. It's the easy way to do things. <laughs> easy way is not the right way. You know that, young. Well, whatever you are. <laughs> yes. Yes, Sergeant. And I'll stand. I'll stand at attention and salute. My, while standing yeah, on my no, chair. No, he doesn't see it as mocking. He he thinks he's actually respecting <laughs> it. 
okay. Good. Stand, stand down. Be on your way. Nice. Barzimal unironically salutes him when he finds out. He's <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We don't have to do that in public, guys. It's I understand you respect the rank and just you know you just as long as we're on even terms here. Nice, Marcus. Give Tankard inspiration for that. <laughs> Okay, so yes, yeah, food is out, you're eating, everything's good, the drinks are still flowing. In fact, you're pretty sure at this point those dwarves have bought you guys way more drinks than you bought them. And uh, the night starts to carry through, and it, as, as people start to filter out, it, it gets a little bit calmer. In here. Marzimo, right? Is, are there any people around gambling, like playing cards or throwing dice or anything? Liar's dice seems to be the thing at this, at this, bar, at this just, town. Just so yeah. happens, I'm quite proficient. <laughs> so <laughs> is Tancred. <laughs> he has his own dice. I bet you that I can roll snake eyes before you can. <laughs> oh, but you're, you're, you're on. You're on. I got bars of mill. A third one of the dwarves pops up and he says, "I'm in as well." He throws his, <sighs> throws his dice and covers him. Well, what what are we throwing on the table? I'm throwing down five freaking gold, man. Just, never mind. And he walks away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't hang. You need to get out. I bet uh, the dwarf can hang. Tancred puts down 10 gold. Oh. Oh, I don't have uh, that many. You mean, <laughs> you mean and, and, as he's, and as he's doing it, his eyes are focused on Martin. <laughs> I was going to say, you mean 8 gold. You, put, you think you put down 10, <laughs> but it's more like 8. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's still a raise. So Chase shakes his head because this is the same gold that's been going back and forth over the boat trip for the past okay. two weeks. You know, I got Hold on, I got something. I got and the something. kitty keeps getting smaller and smaller somehow. I don't know. You know. <laughs> we'll put your ten gold against this thing I got from the war, and I put like an orcish dagger on the table. That thing's probably worth at least like twenty gold. And uh, at this, as soon as you do that, Tankard pulls many this, of those daggers. Tankard pulls the same exact thing out and lays it on the table, and he says, "Well, then mine's worth the same, wouldn't you say?" See, oh. I told you, I had smuggled many of those daggers. <laughs> Sergeant, I forgot you were in the war. Oh. Yeah, it was. Yeah, those were the tough days. Yeah. Yeah. What are we doing again, Sarge? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, why don't you keep your dagger, and I'll keep my dagger, and uh, I'll take this gold and keep it safe for you too. Did I win the dice game? Get his hands on it. Okay, and he sort of passes out on the table. <laughs> I love it. Ah. <laughs> Both of you are. are uh, uh, Barzamel, add yourself, give yourself inspiration. Scene fades to black. You guys go to sleep. <laughs> I adore it. Nice. Now, Barzamel, in your drunken sleep, you do at some point feel someone begin to manipulate your body like you're being lifted off of the table and carried what it feels like up some stairs. Uh -oh. Uh -huh. The rest of you did make it to your rooms. Mm -hmm. and it's too early to march. Where'd my thing go? There I want to. I want to put my hammer up under the door like you'd put a chair. Brilliant, really. Yeah, no, it's a, it fits perfectly. Wonderful. And uh, Barzamil, you have a dream where a little old man, uh, kind of disheveled, pretty gaunt, uh, walks up in front of you on the road, and under his his he's covered his head is covered in a hood, and from beneath the hood you hear someone uh, state, "There's a message from this land's new master." but it's hidden fivefold. It says, the first is at the place where the dandelions rive above and cover the people. The viral and the virulent can be one and the same. Hell tinged one is lost and then several are found and he fades away. Hmm. Barnaby, while you're sleeping, you have a very similar dream. The old man comes out while you were uh, dancing and stops you. And he says to you, the second runs red with the blood of its roots, where house, where house lies and hides her pain in long wooden boxes. She hides more than that, though, but only to keep what is hers. Hmm. And I'll dance around the old man as he tells me this in the dream. <laughs> yep, love it. To Che, you have a, a wonderful dream as well. It says... The third is at the spring of blessed life, where the haunters protect the protect for the protector's haunt. The okay. water runs on, of course, and must be freed for all. Okay. 
What's this old guy look like? L- l- hunched over, real small, probably uh, probably was human at some point, but now seems to be mangled and twisted by some sort of magic. He's not he wearing looks like Dungeon the yellow, Master then. He's not wearing yellow robes, yes. is he? No, dark, <laughs> okay. dark maroon. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. With black stripes on the back. Ah, okay, all right. Got it. You remember Dungeon Master from the D&D cartoon? So I was just mm-hmm. saying, when you said that, I was like, yeah, yeah actually, kind of, with a hood. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, Tankard, you sleep like a baby. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Nothing to remember. Nope. Yeah. Proving, <laughs> proving that dwarves don't dream. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> nice. They're related Young says different. <laughs> hey, Mike, uh, just OOC for a second here. Um, no worries. It was kind of hectic earlier. I don't have any gold left, right? Nope. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's fine. Fact- from what I'm reading here on what you guys gave me, Barzamil, you're broke. Yeah. I think I might be broke, too. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> Jay, you are broke. Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. Barnaby, you've got 20 more gold. Wow! And two sets of dice. Oh! <laughs> Load it. <laughs> we haven't left the tavern yet, and we're already broke. <laughs> no, I've got some. Well, uh, I hope. Yeah, you're good. Oh man, that's great. Unless Barnaby has it all. And here's what I'm wondering: How much does Barzimal remember? He's going to be really hungover when he wakes up. <laughs> it hurts. It doesn't feel good. In fact, make a Constitution saving throw. Okay, oh, cool. Uh, well, that's a nat twenty. You Woo! do not incur a level of exhaustion, my friend. Oh. Woo! Must be that it's that sea air, you know, it's healing. There are people for you. Absolutely. In fact, sleeping anywhere was better than sleeping back on that boat. Yeah. 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 I get that. Mm. So what would you guys like to do? It's morning. You can smell breakfast already being cooked. Smells like chicken. (laughs) Ah, okay. And chicken and potatoes. Barnaby is uh, down in a flash uh, ordering up chicken. Anything other than fish, uh, he will will heartily eat. Uh, Tancred Tancred is searching everywhere for his dice. He swears he had them the night before. Could have sworn you had a set of dice. Dice. Tancred, you're missing your dice. Hmm. Yeah, they had a special mark that only I knew about. If I ever you know, catch the person that took those, they'll be when sorry. You, when you drink in places like this, uh, you know you've got to watch your back. People do get them. I didn't drink in this place. I drank at the blacksmith shop. Yeah. Ah, that's even worse. Uh, no, it was better. Arzimal <laughs> is going to take about 30 minutes to do his morning calisthenics and memorize his spells Beautiful. Before, before he goes down and he smells that chicken and he – is having a hard time remembering the dream already. Does he feel like? Does he feel like that was more than a normal dream? Like, it, do, do I feel like it's worth talking about? Did it? Did it seem supernatural to it, me? Every do an insight check on yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> insight check on yourself. Yeah, um, that's <laughs> that's eight minus one. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know me. Seems like a normal dream to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good no big <laughs> Good yard bird. (laughs) Yeah, they've got a new way. uh, They seem to have taken bread and flattened it out into these strange round shapes that they've laid some some eggs and some chicken that's been cooked up real nice with uh, uh, some chopped up potatoes inside. Mm. This is a great breakfast, especially after such a good night's sleep. I haven't slept this well since we got on that boat. How about you guys? (laughs) I I haven't drank that much in years. (laughs) You have to be careful doing that. Is anyone else missing their coin purse? <laughs> no, yes, it's right it's here. Right. Flat. <laughs> Nothing in it. <laughs> oh. I don't carry a coin purse. Uh, don't worry. You will soon have much. Uh, according to uh, the dwarf here, Tankard, we will be getting paid uh, handsomely in chickens when we deal with the farmers. Oh, I didn't really say we were going to get paid in chickens. I said we could get paid in chickens if we so desired. Nice. Based on what we saw last night, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Exactly. Yes, I, I do not argue with you. I, I am a broker of goods. Barzamil, have you have you seen my dice? Did you take them thinking they were your dice? I don't think so. Uh, mine are made out of knuckle bones. What are That's yours made sure. out of? Mine are made out of uh, toe knuckle bones. <laughs> Well, those look different, don't they? Yeah, and they're orc toad knuckles. Oh, man. 
my, my, my uh, dice were a little bigger than yours, I think, if I remember. So we won't get them mixed up, and I doubt you took them. But, Sergeant, I thought we weren't allowed to take toe knuckles. Uh, yeah, they were a gift. Oh, that's very generous work, sir. Yeah, yes, it well, was. Then I'll just I'll just respect the rank and not ask any questions. <laughs> yeah, that it's better that way sometimes. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, Tache, how'd you sleep last night? Oh, you I up slept all night uh, reading your tomes. I no, no, I slept like a child. Uh, didn't have to worry about anyone uh, disturbing me at all for a change. Uh, I rose with the sun this morning and meditated for a while. And speaking of meditation, uh, had an interesting. Uh, Possibly a vision of sorts. I don't know if, you know, we've never on our trip here, we've never spoken on how you gents, uh, uh, how the gods and fate affects your lives or if, if you believe in any of that at all. Uh, and he kind of grabs onto his holy symbol, you know, and he says, but uh, I, I myself in my past have, you know, uh, let myself be guided by the stars themselves. But as I've grown a little older, I know that there are other things that other other powers, other forces that have some influence and perhaps manipulate us even more than than your dice, you know. Um, but anyway, I ramble on. Interesting. Uh, Barnaby's listening very eagerly as he takes chicken off your plate and he's eating it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's that holy symbol made out of? <laughs> I, I really think I really do believe that uh, this this guy who's playing with his sharpening his dagger all the time can use this this kind of talk. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Tell I, us about your dream, good man. Oh, oh, yes. Sorry, sorry. Yes, yes. Uh, a strange elderly gentleman appeared before me as I was looking through one of my tomes, of course, and bent to my side and, and with a raspy voice whispered in my ear. And, 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 and I wanted to jerk away because his whiskers were were tickling the side of my face and you know I, I i don't enjoy that but he whispered to my to me and 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 spoke of uh the spirit or spring of life spring of life rather and uh uh waters of some sorts and 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 other things that really don't make sense to me perhaps you should water so much my good sir <laughs> more water uh, i don't like the sound of more water Interesting. Do you know anything? Did it, did it make sense to you, Tiche? Tiche? No, I, I. Once I rose this morning, I immediately uh, tried to jot down some of the some of the things I could remember from from the words he spoke. But as with most visions and dreams, importance uh, often they don't make sense until they're in your face, so to speak. Until you're in the situation, until the fates bring it to your attention. Mm. So I shall wait. Mm. Well, could it want... could it be a visit from your God, Tuche? No, is that what your God looks like? No, Gods don't visit no. the people. <laughs> no, <laughs> Severus, uh, he has no time for one of my station. You know, I I am, uh. but you know, <laughs> uh. gods are feckless anyway. We are mere pawns in their hands. Mm. They guide us, my friend. They guide us. You know, uh, they, you don't they believe might in guide faith? you. <laughs> one of, uh, I believe we all make our own way. A faithful dwarf, one of your own race, he believes strongly in the gods. He saved me once. I believe strongly in the gods, but I believe they have their own agenda, and we are but pawns in that agenda. Mm. Mm. Well, we all have a role to play, Sergeant. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> well, well said, Parsimel. Well said. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. We obviously do. So then, uh, before you're even really done eating your breakfast, uh, the girls come out again and they start collecting the plates and start wiping the tables down and very subtly express that breakfast is over. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. <laughs> it's 11. McDonald's is <laughs> yeah. yeah. The breakfast menu is no longer open. <laughs> right. Uh, um, well, that was quick. Jeez, I wanted seconds. Okay, I, I have two things actually. I did have a dream. I was. Oh, very... here we go. You, you, both you need to not drink so much next time. You <laughs> lost I... your dice. You lost my dice, and now you're having. You know, you had a dream. I was very hungover when I woke up, so I don't remember much. Something about dandelions and 
viruses <laughs> and the lost. Um, perhaps it'll come to me again later. And I suppose it was a little old man who told, whispered in your ears and rubbed his whiskers on your face too. I did not rub my face against him, but there was a little <laughs> old man. I don't know what's up with that, but that, that's, that's not this, my modus operandi. This is strange. Uh, both of you had little old men come to you in your drunken sleep and share some Easy. information, Easy. riddle. <laughs> what about you, Barnaby? What about me? Now I'm standing over by the door of, uh, with all my gear and everything waiting to leave. What <laughs> about me? Barnaby, did you uh, have a little old man visit you and tell you strange things? What, are you crazy? Uh, no, not right now, but no. these other two seem to be acting strange having these dreams. Yes, they may I have. didn't. I slept soundly. Uh, they may have eaten fish that didn't, that didn't settle with them. You can only have so much fish. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so are we going to go help the farmers? That's what I'm over here for. He's waiting. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. But I have one more thing for Brother Tache before we go. And yes. I, pull, I pull out the iron holy symbol that belongs to my missing friend. And I say, you have approximate knowledge of other uh, cults and churches, do you not, good sir? That's helpful, cult. Yeah. Don't warm him right <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, I'm not insulted at all. Uh, no. <laughs> you're in the occult, aren't you? Well, I use that in the neutral. Uh, <laughs> right. In the neutral. They don't need to be pro deprogrammed, way. Like a smaller, I, you know, a small, a smaller church. Perhaps. I'll hold. I'll hold. The, yeah, yeah. You don't handle like snakes, that. do you? The bigger, the bigger guys decide who's the cult or not. Yeah, that, that's usually how it works. Uh, yes. I'll uh, hold my hand out, and uh, may I? Yeah, of course. Okay, and I'll I'll take a look at it, peer at it with one eye, and uh, do I uh, think it's familiar to me at all, or would I just have a general general knowledge of it? As he kind of peruses it and turns it around, holds it up, just taking it. Mm -hmm. Your spirit, your spirit reaches into this thing as as oh someone boy. else of great faith, and you can feel from it. This is a a, a, a symbol of a good god. Oh, okay. One so of the dwarven gods of uh, of of creation and forging, and, and do uh, I. Oh, Does uh, Tancred you. see any of see this symbol as this is going on? You can, do you? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if I'm there, I. Yeah. Uh, so I'm assuming Tancred would recognize it. For sure. For what it is. To Barzamil, where did you come by that? It was in one of the last correspondences that Good Bolgan sent me. Good who? Uh, Bolgan. Bolgan. Uh, yes, Bolgan Ironhammer, uh, the son. Bolgan Ironhammer. <laughs> of course. Bolgan Ironhammer is my cousin. Then that what makes us with family. my cousin. That makes us family, Sarge. <laughs> That's my adopted family. Uh, oh my uh, goodness! A Tancred would back up as quickly. We we are not family. <laughs> and I, How and could I, you say such a thing? Well, 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 sir, we we fought the orcs together. You know that makes us as much family as anyone. Well, in that you are true. But what do you want with my cousin? I haven't seen Bolgan Ironhammer for years. Not since his father was killed uh, in the wars. Something with crossbow bolts in the back. I never got the full story. I owe Bogan a life debt because his father, Roji, was the one who took the bolts for me. Roji? My uncle Roji took the bolts for you? <laughs> yes, indeed he did. Um, I didn't know him that well, so I don't really understand that. But I know he was a dwarf of faith, and he was a good man. He was a good man. He was my favorite uncle. Uh, unfortunately, I'm the one that led him into the ambush that resulted in his death. So. Barnaby's standing between them looking up. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. Bar Barnaby says, this is an omen. This this bodes well. The first good omen from our boat trip. Uh, yeah, and uh, at, at hearing of what Boz Barzamil just said, uh, Tancred will reach out and grab him near his collar or whatever's there and say, you led him into an ambush? Uh, uh oh <laughs> Not on purpose. I was not the one who gave myself the position of scout, despite my poor eyesight. Did I say good omen? Maybe <laughs> I was. Maybe I was in hasty. Apparently, the recruitment office for the military was was lacking in the ability to discern my clear um, deficiency in in that type of soldiering. But that is the job I was given, and I performed the best of my ability, which was admittedly subpar. And um, every day I pay for it. 
Tache will stand or reach in between them with trembling hands and give the holy symbol uh, back to Barzamo and say, I would treasure this uh, this this item. Uh, it has much meaning, not just as a uh, as a symbol of faith, but also as a a, a reminder of a heroic deed. Uh, Both based of you on should what, be proud what, and honored. Based upon what Barzamel said, uh, and and remembering his own shortcomings as a soldier, and not wanting to expose that too much, he would take a step back from Barzamel and say. I understand what you're saying. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you get put in a position you uh, you would rather not be in in those situations. But that is a family heirloom. Well, then that is why I'm trying to return it to the one who gave it to me. I have reason to believe he is on this continent. I would feel more comfortable if a member of the family was carrying that. Well, now that I know your identity, good sir, how can I say no? And I offer it up to the sergeant. So respecting both the rank and the fact that he is a family member, I have no reason not to. Thank you, Bars Mill, and hopefully together we can find my cousin, your friend, or did you ever know him personally? Did I know Bolgan? Bolgan. Yeah, personally. Yes. yes. You knew him. We went hunting every summer. Yes. Yes. Well hopefully we can find him and uh, uh find out what happened. what I did not know he had been missing. Well, okay. Tache, I... Barzamil, and Tankard, make a perception check. Ooh. Oh, okay. this, doesn't, this doesn't go well for Barzamil. Oh, that's a, that's a 16. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. Perception. Nine. Okay. Uh, 16. Okay. The three of you now notice that while you've been talking, Barnaby has actually ushered you to the edge of town. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's good. Walking them along. Barnaby, what are you doing? <laughs> we have undead leprechauns to deal with. Have you not? Did you not forget? Oh uh, no, I did not. We, we were having a moment. That was all. Soon our bellies will be growling due to the lack of gold to eat more chicken. Left. Ah, but I have more chicken. And I shake. <laughs> I shake a bag of chicken that I have uh, <laughs> it with. Cold, cold chicken is better than no chicken, sir. But that yes, means we eat. will eat well. We will eat well. Mm. Nope. So are we walking to where we're going? You can see uh, it's got to be maybe maybe half a mile up the road. You see what appears to be a farm set. Okay. Well, let's be on our way then. Barnaby, why don't you uh, you look like the type who likes to lead the way. Why don't you do that? Yeah, what kind of and, march uh, order would you guys like to talk about here? Uh, yeah, Barnaby will, uh, Barnaby will uh, get out front a little ways. Um, um, and I'll say back to uh, Tinker. Did did he tell you the name of this these farmers? He, Frecus. Yes. No, he had no names. He just said the farmers up north were experiencing some troubles. Uh, did anybody in the tavern say anything about the farmers or give out any names? Oh yes, yes. I got a couple of names. There was a Goodhue farm where some people have gone missing, and. Someone named Ames and Lynn just had six tuplets. <laughs> well, what's a tuplet? <laughs> yeah, that's let's, amazing. let's avoid the rabbit <laughs> rabbit family and let's go see the good humes. Yes. Mm. Okay. Good humes. Uh, but but gentlemen, we do have a farmhouse here uh, coming up, so maybe we will ask directions here. Oh, that okay. sounds fine. I'm, uh, for now, I'm pulling up the rear and just sort of keeping an eye on the halfling because I don't really trust him anymore. This is an open plains. You guys are walking. You, you can tell just from here, unless something fell from the sky, nothing is going to sneak up on you. On <laughs> oh, okay. Right. okay. And uh, as you yeah. approach the farm and get closer, you do notice a single fi figure working in the front field, right in front of the, the, the house there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it appears that she is pulling on uh, what, what seems to be some sort of a large object from a, from a, as you approach from a distance. You can't really uh, tell what. Is she a halfling? That she is, in fact. Okay. And uh, probably right about to adulthood, but still on the, 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 the age where she would live with her parents. And then she, she pulls it out, and I'll be damned if it's not a beat the size of her head. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I've never seen one that big. And she's, she, she throws it over her shoulder, and she walks around the, the, uh, the other side of the house. And as you guys approach, you can hear what appears to be some arguing. 
as I as I approach, I will uh, smile and clear my throat and uh, uh, get her attention. Uh, when, she, when, when she looks, I will bow um, and uh, uh, blinking as I begin to tell a lie <laughs> that we are uh, we are adventurers sent uh, by the authorities to uh, investigate the Goodhue farmstead. Um, if you would point us in that direction, my lady. And as you come around the, the, the corner to, to greet yourself to her and, and in start your introduction, you do notice that she is talking and arguing with someone. In fact, there's a group of six humans all dressed in brigandine armor with a black tabard over the front with a, a in, in scrollment of a fist. Mm. Mm. And uh, they seem to be arguing over the... the the, the young girl and a female, which appears to be dressed slightly better than the rest, she must be the captain or something, is arguing over the recent shipment of beets that were not delivered, and ah. that she better get her crap together soon or there's going to be trouble. Ah, so this was the girl that was pulling the beet out of the <clears throat> Correct. Oh, yeah, okay. Before you got okay. to her, she, yeah. Got I got you. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, yep. Okay. I'll let them finish, and then... Um, uh, Ask her if everything is okay, my lady. And she turns around after they're done consorting and, and what appeared to be some sort of a threatening or a scornful tone, the, uh, the humans turn and march away. And she says, oh, oh, thank goodness you're here. Yes, I'm Celia Goodhue. Uh, <sighs> this, you found the Goodhue farm, in fact. Thank, thank you. Um, unfortunately, I, uh, my, my parents aren't in at the, to at the time. It's, it's just me for now. I'm, I'm doing the best I can to try to keep not only the, 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 the local in, but these, these black fists, they're so demanding. I, I find humans are that way. Uh, so what seems to be the trouble? We heard rumor that you, uh, you were in need of help. Uh, I am Barnaby. This is uh, Tancred, and I'll pat the dwarf. Uh, he is uh, somewhat of our leader, as you can see by his rank. Uh, this here is Tache. He is our religious leader. And this gentleman here, well, his name is Barzamel. My lady, in the tankard of bow to her, say, so how may we be of assistance to you? Oh, well, I, I don't know. Um, no, there's, there's no trouble here. Uh, how are you growing such large produce there, ma'am? Oh, the good hues have been growing beets and potatoes for, for centuries and se decades and years now. That big? Well, recently they've been quite large, yes. And you've no idea why? Well, well they kind of just started growing, and then we, we pulled them once, once, they, once they appeared to be done. And yes, no, just of recent they've been quite large. And those uh, folks who were just here, you say they're black fist? Ah, the Black Fists, yes. They're, they're some sort of an army or, or a militia or something. they got a base off to the south, just below the forest. Ma'am, are you I, sure there are no missing persons in this area? No, no, of course not. No, no one's missing here. Where's uh, the rest of your family? My family, my fa they, they went on a trip, you see. They, and then she starts, she breaks, and she starts crying a little bit, and you can hear it choke up in her throat. She goes, <laughs> I... I, I don't know. I have to. Sh I can't tell you. It's too horrible. I have to show you. Oh boy! She starts walking for the farmhouse and gestures you to come inside. Well, we we follow. Hmm. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. As you make your way into the house, she actually leads you through the main entry of the. Of the it's a small farmhouse, and then around to the to the side where there is a staircase going down into a cellar. Uh, when you get down to the, the second she opens the door to the cellar, you're overcome with the smell, the sweet, oh, uh, stinging smell of, of uh, decomposition. Mm -hmm. And as you get down to the bit to the basement, she lights a torch and sets it in a sconce. And you can see uh, against the back wall, there is two adult halflings and another teenage halfling uh, that are appear to be dead uh, probably the better of two weeks. And before that, they looks like they didn't have a great time of it. Giant fist-sized boils and pustules uh, are all over their bodies. Why haven't you been burying them? No, I, 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 you see, I can't. If I'm, I'm not of age yet, and if, oh, oh and if I, if, 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 if anyone finds out that my family's dead, uh, we'll lose the whole farm. How did this uh, happen to them? 
they got sick, you see. They got oh. sick. There was a there was well, the elf and then the elf came and he was trading with the potatoes and they got all sick and I didn't know what to do. The elf. It's the mm. dark elf. I should have guessed it. He's sleeping upstairs. <laughs> what? Boy, there's an elf upstairs. <laughs> Did you just break and you're saying he did this to your parents? Incomprehensible sobbing. Yeah. Barney, uh, uh, Barnaby, with his sobbing and the noise and the dark, he will attempt to slip into the shadows <laughs> and make his way upstairs. Nice. Uh, Tankard will start to stomp upstairs, and he will stop and turn around and say, Jay Barzamil, I, th I think you guys should come. I, I don't think this is something I should do alone. Uh, can I lead uh, Celia up with us? And, oh yeah, she'll follow. Yeah, out of this, follow. Out of this, yeah. yeah, she she doesn't need to be down here. It's not yeah. awesome. And uh, close the close the door uh, behind us. Well done. And uh, I uh, I uh, kind of just uh, console her a little bit and have her just wait to the side. And I uh, I think I guess Barnaby's gone, but uh, uh, Barzamel and Tank Tankrit, I'll kind of gather them to the side and and say. I, it, it, could it have been something that they ate was poisonous, or do you think that this 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 elf uh, purposefully did this to them? Or th this is this is very strange and confusing. Yes. Yeah, so why understand. why would she be the only one to survive? Well, perhaps the best thing to do is to talk to this elf, and from the looks of it, kind of looks around and doesn't still doesn't see Barnaby. Uh, we better uh, get to this elf before our, our friend does. Well, yeah, it's a good idea, and this isn't a thing for children anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm ready. Let's so you guys uh, make your way back upstairs, and Barnaby, you're you're at the lead because you left first. And uh, she guides you, you. Find your way upstairs. There's two bedrooms. Uh, one's wide open, uh, very clearly where she's been sleeping, and the other door is shut. Ah, uh, okay. So, do we see Barnaby already up there? Yeah, you see him at the top of the stairs as you guys make your way up. Yeah, I would. Uh, uh, if there's a keyhole, I would be at it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Doesn't appear to be locked. Okay, Tanker is just going to walk up and put his boot in the door. Nice. You boot the door, clean off of its hinges. This is oh. a very not amazing farmhouse. As, as soon as it looks like stuff's about to pop off, I grab my oar about a mile. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and you bust into the the room. It's a good. It's a, it's a not horribly sized bedroom. The four of you fit in there comfortably, standing around a bed, which uh, is filled with what appears to be a sleeping dark elf drow. Hmm. Mm. Get the up, worst, sir. The worst kind of elf. Oh, boy. The sleeping cup? Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get up, sir. We have questions for you. We know sleep. you're not sleeping. We know elves don't sleep. Right. You shake him, and as you get closer, you do notice that on his skin, uh, you can see it, it's not nearly as bad as what you saw in the good hues, but he does have spots for him. I would like to point out that I did not touch him or approach the bag. <laughs> I don't think anybody did. No. Our work our work is done here. The elf is dealt with. Oh, is he? He is dead? He's or breathing. He? No, he's, oh, he's breathing. breathing. Oh, okay. Does he respond to us at all? One sec. Yes, this could uh this could be this could be a short adventure. <laughs> Holy man, man of medicine. And oh, I'm, yeah, we'll see how, how that goes. <laughs> do, you, do you know anything about well, the healing of the... It's a T I have T to look in my books and see. TPK <laughs> by plague. What yeah. disease would make an elf sick and a halfling sick? So you're digging through books? Yeah. No, does the elf yeah. respond to us? He didn't, he didn't stir right away, no. Really? He's, he's sleeping pretty soundly. Yeah, I've never he seen anything. He's talking in normal before. voices. I, I've heard of plagues and sicknesses, but I, I don't know. Celia, did your family go into coma? Did they go into a long, dark sleep before they died? They came home, and, and then and, and, and the elf was with them, and then the, they they were already sick, and, and that was two days ago. Do you know where they came home from? Uh, all I know is they were supposed to be meeting with the elf. They've been trading potatoes with him. Where do they usually meet him? I do not know. Elf, elf, I'm going to be prodding him with my hammer trying to get him to talk to us. <laughs> okay. Elf, we have questions. I mean, we have questions for you. He stirs after a little bit of prodding, mm -hmm. and uh, you can see he's struggling kind of to keep conscious, and, and so, so he's not very strong. 
Just, no, no, they've never, I've never, they always just called him the elf. The elf. And he says, Mr. Elf, we have questions for you. Yes, yes, my name, my name is Ariz. Fear not, you know you've nothing to fear from me. I fear no one does anymore. Anymore. And so I am but a, I am but a, a drower, a uh, escapee. I, I am a merchant. I, I, I trade with those the surface dwellers uh, and some Swerf Neblin that live beneath the, the mountain. Do you know how you got this sickness upon you? Uh, I, was, I, was, I was on my travel up from the under, under the mountain and uh, it just something came across me. I've, I didn't feel great. And then I noticed the good hues. They, they, they were really sick with it. And we met where Did we they? normally do at the mouth of the cave, but I fear something down there Something, something's got to us. Mm. Obviously. Well, I'm sure our our uh, religious man here would uh, be willing to give you whatever commissions with your God you need before you die, if you so desire. Oh no! <laughs> I've said my last curses to that spider bitch. <laughs> Whoa! I'm afraid we're no longer on speaking terms. But thank you. Yeah, perhaps this is why you were sick. She, maybe she uh, cursed. A woman scorned. Uh. <coughs> and he spits up some blood. Mm. At that, um, Tancred's backing out of the room. Is, is there nothing you can do for him, uh, Cleric? Holy uh, man. No, I'm, I'm afraid not. Maybe uh, perhaps I could make him a soothing... Uh, tea or something to, to help him rest in his final moment so that it's maybe not as, as painful to him. If you want to make a, a wisdom medicine check, yeah, go for it. You can do that. Okay. Oh, no, nah, not too good. Uh, seven. So you take some herbs out of a pouch. That you <laughs> as you're throwing them into the, the water that's not hot, wow. remember that you can't remember if these are tea Mm -hmm. Or tobacco. Okay. All right. But you stir it anyway, and he takes it and goes, oh, oh, thank you. At least to, to wet my parched lips. And he drinks of it, and he drinks mm -hmm. of it, and he drinks of it, and he, he goes back on his back. And that's it. <laughs> bleeding from his eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> okay. All right. I will uh, say uh, 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 go with the fates to the netherworld and... Uh, find your place amongst others of your kind, and uh, perhaps and hopefully your your deeds in your lifetime will find you a uh, a place of standard amongst others and the amongst the uh, the spokes of the great wheel. And I'll nice. touch my holy symbol and, and back out. Excellent. Let's uh, <laughs> let's <laughs> a break lot of words to say quick. for someone who's no more than worm food now. Yeah. I will say the same for you, my friend, and more. But hopefully it never it's comes waste. to that. <laughs> Sometimes Celia, this place is not safe for you. Nice. Yeah, let's, before we get it back into it, let's break for five real quick. Okay. okay. Thanks, guys. Yep.
So thanks for coming, everybody. Oh, yeah. It's been fun so far. Hell yeah. You guys are knocking it out of the park with the role play tonight. Oh, that's my favorite part of this stuff. Heck yeah. Oh. So you said you plan on making this a, a usual thing, like a recurring... Absolutely, I love doing it. If if I can find if I can find room in the schedule and people want to come, absolutely. Awesome. I'm afraid my days of nine people at a table are done, but this is this is perfect for me. This is a good group size. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, there's there's already. It seems to be that the the Friday evening is turning quickly turning into prime time for at least for this group of ours. So. Let's well, yeah, see. yeah, that, that works. Yeah, that works because like sometimes we can't get the normal game together yeah. on Friday, so we can always rotate. That's great. Doesn't bother me. I love it. I like playing. I don't get to play enough. Yeah. At least on days, you know, when I'm available, it's like I find myself DMing on those days. So it's kind of nice to be able to play on the days I'm available. Yeah, I think you, I'm know, what's, you know what I'm noticing uh, besides uh, Mike awarding inspiration somebody yeah. watching this couldn't tell what system we were playing that's right i never did that's bring right. that up did i we're just, <laughs> we're just rping you yep. know yep. Yep. I, I think that's great it doesn't yeah. the system doesn't intrude at all and that's right just proves you can do it with you know the system <clears throat> it's the people yeah I've, I've, made that, I've made that argument before about 5e and i mentioned it in one of the groups it's like you don't don't mention the skill just say what you're doing yeah you know? yeah yeah yep yeah, I mean, uh, like a move in PBTA, the GM will mm -hmm. facilitate it. Yeah. Right. Make a stealth sure. check. Make, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, I've got right in front of me what your guys' skills and scores are. We could, I can definitely do it that way. <laughs> it's not a problem. Cool. Oh, you know, you don't found. have to. You don't have to change anything you're doing, brother. Just <laughs> <laughs> well, so we're, are we all back? Yeah. Yeah, and Tancred, Tancred is uh, he's not going to leave Celia here. Mm -hmm. okay. He's going to adopt this little girl, and she's now a member of the Fanghammer clan. Mm -hmm. And he's going to suggest to the others, we need, I think this place should be burned down. We don't want this to spread. Everyone in here is dead. We're going to watch out for this little girl from now on. She, we're her family. And she, 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 she clams up again and goes, no, not my farm. Here, yeah, this is two her, months, I'll be old enough for it to be mine. It's their think, family's livelihood. You know, their livelihood. family, the, the people die here. I think I think lie. I think we uh, take the bodies and we use lie to de to destroy the bodies, or just burn them. Yeah, or I'm burn not, them. We could I'm not always, touching those bodies. We could just bury them. Mm -mm. <laughs> I, I I I don't feel competent in touching those bodies. Um, yes, Celia, you will be better off with us. I will I will watch out for you. So, cleric, it looks like you and I are the only ones that have enough faith in the gods to bury these people. <laughs> To burn these people. Let me ask the young lady a question, though. You mentioned that generations of your family have grown these large turnips, and yet this land has only been open for 50 years. Are you saying that your family grew large turnips back on the other continent, or are you we, saying that... Yeah, we moved We moved here from the mainland, yes. So it's not this land that causes the turnips. It's some special touch of your family. Well, no, we didn't grow them this big back home. I know that. Hmm. Mm. Maybe it's uh, the place... That's something to consider because these turnips are of an extraordinary uh, uh, size, gentlemen. She looks at you three and says, "They're beets. How does he not say? How does he say turnips? Beets? <laughs> <laughs> he had too much to drink last night." And I look, I look her in the eyes, and she sees the advanced cataracts. So, yeah. Oh, right. I, I am what you might call legally blind, young lady. I apologize. Oh, I'm it's so got, sorry. It's gotten me into trouble in the past, but. Uh, yeah, mm. well, these these root vegetables of yours. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> these these large these wasabi. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, nice. they, this this ground this land apparently has some special uh, quality or humor about it that is worth studying, and it would be a shame if she lost this land because. Well, and if I can be completely truthful, it, it's only been in the last month that they've really grown this large. Uh -huh. It would have been very helpful if you'd told me that from the beginning. <laughs> and you have no idea, ma'am, what, what, what preceded that at all. Nothing, well, nobody visited you. Until this week, I thought it was a blessing of the gods. But since then, it may have been a curse. 
Tell her, Tiche, that it is not a blessing of the gods. Oh, now you speak I, for the gods, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I throw my hands up and say, it's all relative. It could be a blessing, but what we do with I it... I told you the gods are feckless. Oh. <laughs> We're I roll my eyes and I go, regardless of that, <laughs> we should try to do something with the bodies. If the young lady wishes to, to leave her family farm intact, then we, we burn the... Uh, the dark elf and uh, agreed. Uh, and folk. Yeah. And then you hear the front door smash open. Uh. <laughs> uh, Barbie just vanishes. <laughs> Give me a stealth check. <laughs> Who? Uh, Ten plus seven. Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah, you see a perfect spot right beneath the bed. When I hear the front door open. I, I silently cast the mage hand um, um, cantrip. I believe it's a cantrip. I mean, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It I, is. I, I silently sort of uh, cast that off to the side because I got something in mind if I get into a combat situation okay. <laughs> suddenly. Uh, Tancred picks up Celia in one arm <laughs> nice. and backs away out of the way and says, uh, Che, uh, what, what is that? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I will turn and look and see what the source of this disturbance is. You turn to see two dwarves, except they're ah. not dwarves like what you would normally think oh. to see. They've got dark, sallow skin, mm -hmm. just a couple of shades north of coal. Their mm -hmm. eyes are emblazed, emblazed with uh, the irises of their eyes are emblazed in red, and they have long red mane in big braids. Oh, they wow. have matching leather armor the insignia on them that that could ins it, it, it shows an affiliation of some sort okay and they're each holding uh, a two-handed battle axe <laughs> and my, they my seem to be uh holding a pendant over their chest mm -hmm. which as it activates they double in size whoa okay so they're about your height so now they're human size Right, now they're your height, <laughs> but big. But, uh, they still dwarven stature, but our height, you know, just right. They're okay. stout as heck, but okay. double in size. Do I recognize okay. them, Mike? Uh, you would know these as Druagar. Okay, dark, that's, what, dark that's what I was wondering. Okay, um, Roll today will uh, will mm. uh, uh, hold his ground as as well as he can and 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 clear his throat. That's and, a six for me. <laughs> okay. Is it a D ten? D twenty plus your dex. Oh, we're rolling initiative. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I missed that. Okay. All right. Nineteen. Uh. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, what's my dex? Zero. Okay. So nineteen. Seven for me. Yeah. Did he lock up? I don't know. He, <laughs> no, he's thought, doing. So he's there. He's doing something. Yeah, I thought he was just giving us the evil eye. <laughs> Mike, you. Uh, he might have. Uh, he locked up the other night in my game. So I'm yeah, trying, yeah. I'm trying to prod him, but it's not working. <laughs> yeah. yeah. His mic. His mic was dipping out a little. Oh, there he is. There he is. Are you there? You must have lost the initiative, Mike. Yeah. yeah, I lost, lost initiative. initiative. Yeah. I, thought, I thought you were just staring at us like out of one eye, like out of the <laughs> Where those nineteens? I was like, oh no, I I cut Dave off. He quit talking. No wait, <laughs> wait, no. They all they, they all stopped. <laughs> uh, can I ramble on or no? No, go for it. Oh, Absolutely. I can. Okay, all right, okay. Uh, I uh, oh, now he's gone. He just. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, we win. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Barnaby's dancing around the bed. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's the internet for you, folks. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I wonder how that affects the recording because it says we're still live. No, Josh, I think it. He can. He should be saying, able to put right back in. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that funny, Josh? We have another cleric who likes to ramble on. <laughs> ramble on. Why does that seem so familiar to me? <laughs> I got some. I got some Zeppelin in my head now. When you said that. <laughs> yeah. Just pass, start passing a plate to Jay. You'll be right at home. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that'll work too good with our friendly company, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have nothing to give. Every, every time yeah. the plate goes around, uh, it's empty. Yeah. 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 That's what happens when you have a freaking thief in the, in the party. Or I told you. Opportunist. I, I, am, I am a smuggler, not a thief. 
Yeah. Gotcha. 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 <laughs> yeah. He's a rouge. Yeah, rouge. Yeah. <laughs> He's a rouge. <laughs> a rogi, rogi. <laughs> yeah, rogi. <laughs> rogi the rouge. A rogi, a rogi, ragu. <laughs> no, a knave. A knave. He's a knave. Yeah. The cheapest yeah. and most common of pasta sauce, ragu. Ragu. <laughs> <laughs> You could get the great value brand to go a little cheaper, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this uh, is good. Yeah. I'm uh, enjoying it. I like yeah, this. This, this yeah. is this is the this is my favorite fifth edition game I've played in. So. If it's gonna if it's gonna crash, mm -hmm. I, I like it to crash before we're killed by Drugar dwarves. That's perfect. Yeah. 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 I for, I forgot they grew. I was like, what are they yeah, doing? I did too. Yeah. Like, oh, they they grow right. Yeah. Ooh. I like to know if you notice. He said you saw that, but I mean, do you know? Would you inherently put the two no. that this this is what made them grow, or is that just like, whoa, no. where'd that come from? I'm thinking it has something to do with their amulets. You know, yeah. that's that's my guess. With yeah. Barz um, with Barzimal's eyesight, he doesn't even know what's looking at. Like, it's just what, two gray bars. What's there, Tache? Right? Yeah. What's there, Tache? He, he thinks his cataracts are acting up again. Like he doesn't even know that they actually yeah. grew. We he cast uh, you cast Mage Hand. Next thing you know, one of us is being groped. Yeah, right. <laughs> Your eyes getting closed out or something. Yeah, yeah like I the Three that. Stooges. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can do a lot with those can trips, man. Yeah, you can. You can. You can do, you know, yeah. a lot. Yeah. You can. Yeah, and they're fun too. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Oh yeah, they still got shoelaces. No, don't worry. About it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go. There you go. Oh, oh, no, no. Okay. I thought he was. There was like a flash. There was. I don't know. There, there. He's trying. Is he? Wow, he must have really. Yeah, he had a he major issue. Did you say anything in Facebook? Oh, yeah, I'm, maybe. You know, I'm, not, I'm actually not in my Facebook, so. Yeah, I'll you know, ask you. Too. Yeah, let's check that out. Let's. I'll check it out. Let's see. Facebook. Oh, there. Uh, I don't know. That's Mark. I've got 58 notifications. <laughs> Good lord. All of them I'm... important. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> right, first right. thing I do is turn all that crap off. Yeah. <laughs> that's like that's like the biggest downside to getting involved in these groups and stuff. I swear. Because yeah. if, you, if you comment on one little thing, you get notifications for like two years. Mm -hmm. uh, you just got to shut that stuff, you know. Yeah, you can, you can, you can, turn you can it filter off. it. Yeah, you can filter it. Yeah. yeah. If I want to see it, I'll go look at it. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. You, that's you know. good point. Well, unless you belong to like 300 groups or whatever you know yeah. oh, it's so. just like texting you know you text somebody something and they say okay it's like no no i'm gonna assume yeah. you got the message yeah he, just yeah. Said, right. he says he's rebooting stuff oh, okay oh, okay okay so ladies and gentlemen if you're just turning into tef's tavern <laughs> tef is absent currently <laughs> we did we, we we decided to evict him from the game. <laughs> no there was a there was a technological glitch yeah yeah he, he'll be back shortly we're all all our characters are frozen in place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's an old. Uh, it's an old. Uh, what do they call those from the thirties? Uh, uh, cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Oh, cliffhanger. Yeah. Like yeah. the Flash Gordon the thing. Serial yeah. cliffhangers. Yes. Yeah. Except yeah. one of you us had what? to be in a situation where we were we were right. obviously going to die. That would have been well. well, we well might. That is. That's that's the cleric <laughs> yeah. because I'm staying hidden under the bed no matter what. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's two kinds of gamers. I knew everyone would want to go to the place where the people disappeared. Uh -huh. I wanted to go find the people that were having the sex tuple. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's just that's just obviously they, they really happens. know what's going on. Yeah, they know what's going on. Like there, <laughs> there's something fertile going on in, in those fields yeah. for sure.